Good afternoon. <clears throat> Clear my throat in that one. Sorry, yes. <laughs> I'm almost over this cold, so today's just more of a cleanup day. So I wanted to just get back on today and talk about a couple of things. And I've talked recently about the, they call it uh, self care, gentleness, being kind to myself, that sort of stuff. I'm going to bring out the big gun today, so to speak, which is self love. And I've talked about this quite a bit in the past, but I've been really thinking about how self love is vital to our life, to our love, to our joy, to everything we want. I've talked quite a lot in recent broadcasts and with my clients especially about how self-love is vital for your healthy relationships because if you don't love yourself first, you're not going to have a healthy relationship. That, my belief is the lack of self-love is what, um, and so as well. The codep codependency is largely based on the lack of self-love. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Got that clip. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, and by the way, if you've been watching my if you're watching technically my Facebook lives the last few days, I've been playing with some new ideas because Facebook dropped the scene with me, the ability to do horizontal Facebook lives on my phone. So I'm using my computer with different cameras, different setups, and so the picture seems to be changing a little bit. So hopefully that doesn't make it too weird. All right, back on topic. That's been on my mind. So let's <laughs> get about it. So. In simple terms, self-love is a method, a vehicle, a resource, a and to me, an opportunity to reconnect to who we are. When you love yourself truly, fully, authentically, accurately, humbly, you discover first of all that you're a lot more amazing than you thought you were. Now I mean, let me really qualify this. I mean this from an authentic place. There are people out there who act like they're amazing, but they're really putting on a facade. They're not really that amazing because they're putting on a false act. What I'm speaking about is when you start to realize who you are as a human being, it's way better, way more um, lovable, way more amazing than you thought you first were. That's certainly been something I've learned over the years and certainly in my journey of owning my own self-respect, which I mean, it's kind of like having self-love as the core and then all the spokes that come off it, which include like self-love, self-respect, self-appreciation, self-confidence, self-acceptance, self, uh, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> I ran out for a second. But it starts with self-love. When you remember who you are, when you appreciate who you are, when you absolutely, truly care about yourself first, then everything out there in life starts to change with it. And I've said this quite often, and I'm saying it again here, that if you want to have a healthy relationship out there, you've got to have a healthy relationship in here. And that means what self-love is about. Because if you start thinking about how you've been in a relationship and you love somebody else and make them feel great and everything else, why don't you do that for yourself first? Now, I talked yesterday about the idea of the oxygen mask and the plane, where it's like, put your own one on first before you put somebody else's on, your child. Self-love is the same thing, in that when you love yourself, first of all, you start to find that your quality and qualification of relationship goes up and improves. You choose more wisely for yourself because you own who you are. Secondly, when you love yourself first, you don't need something else to love to make you feel whole, which is powerful. And thirdly, when you love yourself first, then when you go out to love somebody else, you have a resource you can draw upon. So self-love, as I said, is vital. Is the word you use? Uh, yes, vital. I'm looking at the screen and see what I wrote. And having understanding of what that is will transform your experience in love, in life, in success. I've, I've got a self-love meditation, which I talk about, and I'll put the link in the comments you check out yourself, which is a guided meditation to get you back on track to love yourself. I also have a masterclass, which, I'm, which I've been talking about for a while, it's not launched just yet, called the BFF Masterclass, which is about balance, freedom, and flow. Underneath all of that is self-love. In fact, if you join the BFF Masterclass, I will include the self love meditations my gift to you as well. So both links to be in the comments. But what I'm trying to get to here is that if you want to have everything work in your life, it starts with loving yourself. I've got some new things brewing with uh, a couple of joint ventures, a couple of partnerships. They're going to transform my work into a new direction because I'm loving myself enough to know that I can't do it all myself. Now, I have a certain bias on this because I had to do some studying with a friend of mine. It talks about human design. It's hard to understand what my real um, psychological, but my 
internal wiring is, I'll put it that way, is I function better when I'm in partnership in terms of business. But I don't do it all myself. And the thing is, frankly, my skill set is such that it helps having a team working with me rather than trying to do everything on my own. And, 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 I, and I learned that lesson the hard way. But it comes back to being humble enough because it's the thing. There's some ego thing going on for me. Maybe it's for you. It's thinking about, I'll do it myself. I'll get it done. I'll make it happen. Whereas when I succumb to, or I relax into, or I become more vulnerable to the idea of being self um, accepting of other people, so I'm trying to try another way. When I recognize that uh, by working with other people as a team, where I get to be in partnership or even team leading, I have that wider side inside of myself as a step down from being a solo for now. I thought, if I do it all myself, I'll get it done, it'll be perfect, it's going to be great, it'll be wonderful. And when I learned that actually being a team is more effective, more successful, and less stress and strain on me, then I recognize that I'm actually in the right place because I'm lining up to my true value, which is a self-loving act. Now, I know I can go on many different ways about how self-love will change your life. It will change your relationships. If you're in one now, loving yourself more will make you much more uh, attractive to your partner because you'll be more magnetic, because you'll be more glowing from the inside out, makes you more attractive. And if you're single, it'll help you attract what you really want, because when you start to love yourself fully, your standards will go up, you'll choose higher than you did before. You won't settle for what doesn't fit you. This little thing called self-love, this little magical tool of self-love, is a game changer for most people's lives. And think about self-love, it's nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this. It's all down in your heart, in your, in your self-respect, your self-concern. It's the crucible of your life. The crucible of your life. Hmm. It's a new meme. Your heart is your crucible for your life. I'm going to play with that one. So, <laughs> not here, but elsewhere. So my point I want to make clearly is that when you love yourself fully, I know that for myself, for example, in this last three days, four days, of being down with the head cold, you still hear my sinuses and a little stuff up still was a great reminder to me to take care of myself, to lay low, not to keep efforting, to just let go and relax and be more self-supportive. And ultimately, underneath all of that, was reminded to love myself. And being sick is a great teacher for that, if you haven't had the experience recently. I'm not wishing them anybody. If you go through the flu, whatever you're doing, remember to take care of yourself. And I don't mean you've got to go do all the stuff. It's more about being with yourself. Yes, you do all the, do, do all the medications or homeopathics, whatever you choose, First thing on the home path inside. You still can remember to love yourself through the pain because the more you're not cursing the illness or cursing yourself, the more you're loving yourself instead, the more able you are to have a quicker healing. Now I'm not a doctor, but I believe that's the truth. <laughs> so as I said through the whole talk, self-love is a potent, vital aspect of your life that when you honor and own and respect to yourself, your life will change. I think that's the point I want to make today. I know it is. But I think I'm complete with that. I'm keeping these short because, again, my throat and my sinuses are still clearing up as you can hear in my tone and voice. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to make this succinct. And this is my Saturday broadcast. Here's the casual attire. And uh, that's really about it. That's what I want to say today. If, again, I'll put the links in the comments for those two things, my self-love meditation and my EFF masterclass. Again, if you do choose to sign up for my EFF masterclass, um, I, will, I will remember to include self love meditation as part of that. Um, you get either one if you want. Then the links will be in the comments. Um, and I ask you actually ask this question: How do you feel about self love, and how has self love impacted your life? Either one of those two can answer in the comments. I'd appreciate that. I look forward to seeing how you answer and what you feel about that. Because frankly, I'd like to hear from you. How is self love applying itself in your life? How are you using it for your own self support? How are you discovering more ways to be more loving of yourself? And what's in the way if it isn't the way? So that's your thing that you can choose to take it on. With that, I think that's it. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, Jack. Oh, we are both to them from your head. Um, replays. If you've ever seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I usually do it at 5, usually do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week, here on my personal page on Facebook, which is by myself. As I said, the last three days, four days, I've been playing with different formats because <clears throat> playing with different formats because Facebook changed its algorithm on, or I should say, Facebook changed its app on the mobile phone, and I'm no longer able to do my usual 
far as I'm on Facebook Live, which is how I like doing them, because they go to YouTube, which I'll tell you about in a moment, and other places too. So this is a different presentation, but normally I do it, well, I, I do do every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time here on my personal page. Sometimes the time changes, but the day doesn't, every day, seven days a week. So Barry Selby on my personal page, where you can join me live at 5 p.m. usually. Replays are on my business page on Facebook, and yes, on my YouTube channel, as I mentioned. You go to my YouTube, my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. You can like that page, and you can watch most of my broadcasts there. I think there's about, well, actually less than most. It's probably about 300 or so there. However, I have a backup plan, so I have my YouTube channel filled out with all of these broadcasts. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel. On there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, but every single one of these broadcasts live, and they're there, I checked. And you can scan through there for times that stand out, speak out to you, or keywords you want to search for, and find the talks to help you get where you want to go. This work is getting deeper and deeper for me. I hope it is inspiring you more and more. I do invite you to check out my work, check out the links in the comments, and find ways to take care of yourself this year. There's a lot of things happening this year, big stuff, but if we forget to take care of ourselves, it's going to be all for naught. That's a prophecy. So I uh, thank you for watching, as I said before, and uh, I invite you to take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, and there's a reminder, please take care of yourself. See you again tomorrow.